My name is Donna Gukama. I'm a visual artist working in performance, installation and sound. My piece for the Triennale, it's part of a series that I've been working on. The series is mostly site-specific works which respond to historical events. All of them form what I call a history book. The idea of the history book is to speak to bodies that have been excluded from history. I was working with a wall that would record various languages that are Southern African and they become layered, of course, because with the language that I speak, but it continues to be layered over days to speak about languages of people that were brought in as laborers. The second part of it is a continuation of the same work by bringing in seeds and plants that are indigenous that was removed in order for the wine farms to exist. The work is titled Sylvia's Letters to My Future Self. So when I went to New York, I felt out of place. For the first time, I could probably understand what it meant to be a black body in a white space. What I did was I started with researching into the place through the archives in Salem in the community library. And I landed on Sylvia Boston. They say she was the first black slave there. And I think she arrived at the age of six or seven. And then she died in 18. So when I started reading more into that, I barely found information about her. You know, I was, I was already disgusted by that, and then I felt out of place. And I'm like, how must she have felt coming here at a very young age? And then I thought, instead of rewriting her story, I could create another story that relates to Sylvia other than just her being a slave. I thought I could imagine what Sylvia might have been given a chance to express if all that information wasn't deliberately erased. The idea around this is I'm cre recreating her space or reimagining what Sylvia's life might have been. And so the work uh, includes this space, which is supposed to be Sylvia's space, and a few photographic stills inside the main exhibition space. Concept. So it started in 2017, it's still an ongoing project. And I got this idea from my very first visit to the USA, New York precisely. And that was my very first time to step out of the continent. So being in a different space and feeling different, I only imagined what uh, Sylvia's life might have been. So Sylvia Boston and the current immigration crisis and everything puts me in the middle of all the songs, or like the common denominator in these situations. So the work in brief highlights space, memory, time and being. I think for me it's it's a very good opportunity to, ex my, to express myself as an artist and to show my work and also to highlight on critical situations that happen in, in my own creative way. modern formation as I understand it that is about like industrial production industrial scales and rates of production and they tend to be mono monocultural monocultures that are really more about like servicing the market as opposed to maintaining a stable ecosystem so for me there's a tension between forest and plantation um, and the logics that I mean plants have their own logics if plants can have logic but but there's something about the intentionality of, of the plantation that I don't necessarily find in... I don't know if, if the plantation could be... falls under the rubric of rhizome, whereas, whereas forest does, because in, in some ways, the thing that's fascinating about 
My name is Patrick Bongoy. My work is called Acoustic Current. It is an outdoor installation of a house that is built out of a recycled material and it's standing at about two and a half meters by four meters square. The installation speaks about the impact of migration. It brings this concept of the ghost memory which tells the story of what we have lost as you're entering in there's a dense forest of letters cut out of rubber. But the scattered letters reminds us of all the lies that we were told from our leaders. This work called the observers to reconnect with the memory of a former lie. It allows for a chance to enter a space in our mind that we tend to look deep within ourselves. Our environment holds the history of our time, for sure. The question of why do I make art is very, <laughs> is very hard to, to answer. If it can heal somebody, if it's one person, if it can bring joy to one person, or if it can make one person uncomfortable about what they are doing that is not right, then I think that is why I make art. <laughs>